If you have a matrix or mega tree in your light display, you can use moving images like this. You can use these images to tell a story, punch up your visuals, and add a lot of impact to your light show. X-Lights allows you to use animated images like GIFs with effects like layering and transitions to beef up your show. And yes, I pronounced it GIF, it's not peanut butter. The trouble with using GIFs you find is that they're not always ready to be used with X-Lights out of the box. How can you turn something like this into something like this? Using a tool like Photopea helps GIFs look a lot better on X-Lights. Let me get you started. Let's first take a look at a GIF in X-Lights. Here's a simple sequence where I have a skeleton strutting across the matrix. Let's take a look at the attributes of this particular pattern. The GIF is hooked to this image pattern. The GIF is looping, that means it's running at its own scale. The black is transparent. We also know that I have the movement going from left to right. If I stopped him in the center, he'd just kind of sit there in the center. Instead, I'm going to have him move from left to right. Also, this GIF is huge, so I have the scale knocked down to 50%, so you can see the starting and ending scale of that particular image is at 50%. So what I want to do is, with this particular pumpkin GIF, I want to overlay that pumpkin GIF on top of it. So if I just did that, I'm, let me grab another picture, if I ran this over top of this. Because I'm using layers in X lights, I can put one on top of the other. Anything that's on top will go to the front of whatever's behind it. So if I wanted to take a look at this, I'm going to get my pumpkin here. It's the original here. This is the original pumpkin that you see over here. And I don't want it to move. I want it to go right in front of it. Now I notice even at 50%, it's still too large. I'm going to have to say 7%. If you notice, even though the pumpkin's in front of the skeleton, the background looks like it's black, but you still can't see the skeleton behind him. Even with the transparent black set up, it looks like it's not working, and I'll show you later why that's not working. Also, the eyeballs are yellow and the background is orange, and while you can kind of see it here, it's going to be really difficult to see on the matrix because they are very close together in color. What I want to do is I want to modify this so that it's a little closer, that it a little closer to the, the matrix size, which is a 55 wide by 43 tall. I want to fix the black background so it's transparent so I can see behind him. I also want to make sure that he's not blinking so fast. He's blinking so fast, but if I was to stop the loop animated, he almost stopped blinking at all, but maybe once. We need to modify this so it looks better in X-Lights. At this point, I want to issue a disclaimer. The video is not going to be a commentary of the use of images off the internet. You can either create your own images using image tools like Photopea, or be sure to use images that are using the Creative Commons license that allow the image to be modified for use in your home show. With that out of the way, let's move to Photopea. Now that we're in Photopea, Let's start by understanding what an animated image is. An animated image is essentially an electronic flipbook. It's built from multiple still images grouped together and shown rapidly in a sequence that gives the illusion that the image is moving. If we were to open this pumpkin in Photopea, you'll notice a GIF is just a bunch of still images or layers in a folder. You'll also notice the names of each layer follows a pattern. The underscore A underscore tells Photopea that the layer is an animated layer. The underscore A underscore is followed by an identifier and this is like a frame with a number on it, which can be anything. It doesn't really need to be in sequence like this. Finally, you'll notice that the layer ends in a comma and a number. This number is a delay. This will tell the animated image how many milliseconds to delay, or hold that image before going on to the next image. Once the GIF hits the final image, it'll loop back around to the original. Now, we said first that the back wasn't transparent because X-Light will find any black pixel and makes transparent. Well, the problem is this isn't a true black. If I was to take this eyedropper, you'll actually see that the RGB value is 004 or 005, somewhere wherever I place it here on the background. That's a really deep blue. Since it's zero red, zero green, and only like four or five blue, it's a really deep blue. We want to get rid of that. Now, there are many different ways to get rid of that, and I'll show you a couple here. But primarily, you'll want to go to the select layer. With this select, you'll have a couple options. You can use remove background. Uh, that takes a while and it's not complete ac accurate. You can use color range, you can use magic cut. If I was to use magic cut, you can see that it kind of works in this case, but there's a little fuzziness around the edges and you'll, you'll see that on a different layer here. If I was to actually take a look at this layer and look at magic cut, you'll see that the, the pumpkin starts to disappear. So it's not, it's trying to get 
It's trying to approximate where the pumpkin is. So I could use that. What I like to do is kind of a, a mix of a couple things. First thing I want to do is I want to grab the paint bucket tool. So the paint bucket tool will try and fill in colors that are approximately the same with a specific color. In this case, I want to go black, true black, which is zero, zero, zero. So I click this little color icon over here and change it to full black. And I go to my paint bucket tool here and I fill it in with pure black. I just kind of click it here a couple times. Now that I've done that, I want to select that black and delete it. So I'll use a color range and you can see here, there's a perfect pumpkin. I'll select that and then hit the delete key. That cuts out my pumpkin completely. I want to do this for all my pumpkins. Also, there's two different icons for each layer. You got to make sure you can see the layer and make sure that the layer is highlighted. Sometimes you can see a layer that's not being highlighted and you start working on it and you'll be editing the wrong layer. Whatever layer is highlighted, that's where the editing is going to happen. Fill that in, color range, okay, delete. And this is kind of tedious. If I don't do that paint bucket, let me show you what it looks like without doing the paint bucket. Is that a color, color range? You'll see actually it's grabbing some of the, there's, the black background is not pure black. So you see this kind of fuzziness around the edges? Well, as I get close to fuzziness, it'll pull in more or less. You can see that the actual background isn't as pure as you think it is. It's got a lot of these additional colors that are off. But if I was to fill it in, if I was to stop this and fill it in with black and then do that again, you'll see that it's pure black and that only selects outside the pumpkin. Let me continue to do this for all the frames and I'll be back. Okay, now that we have all the pumpkins with a clear background, we have to crop it and shrink it. We can use a crop tool over here to crop it. And I wanna show you a little trick with this cropping. If I was to just grab these corners and move it around, you'll notice that I can have any dimension I want. I can crop it to whatever I want. However, I like this dimension, this particular width to height ratio. And it's really difficult trying to approximate that ratio by just dragging and pulling it. However, let me exit out, let me exit out of that. Now, if I was to hold the shift key and drag this corner, it stays the same. I can accurately grab the corners and keep the same dimension and hit enter to crop it. This crops all the layers and not just the one. So you can see that all the layers now are zoomed in. Now that I've cropped it, I want to shrink this. So I can go to image and image size and Right now, the dimensions are 293 by 232. I want to shrink it by the largest dimension in my matrix. Since the largest dimension in my matrix is a width of 55, I'm going to set a width of 55 pixels. There's different resampling. I'm going to use bilinear. Shrinking degrades the, the quality of the picture. So play around and see which one's best for you. Not all pictures are the same. When I do that, I can hit Control plus to zoom in. And now I have something I can work with. You can see the individual pixels on my pumpkin. Now that we've shrank it down to a manageable size, we want to take a look at the definable features. The yellow on the orange is pretty clear here in the GIF, but with pixels, it's not so clear. If you're working with a GIF that has eyes, a nose, or a mouth, and the color of those appendages is close to the color of the face, it is good to either make the appendage much darker or use black as an eyeliner to outline the features. Now, this is a simple animation, so I might make it even easier on myself. If you look at the faces, they're pretty much the same face all the way up to about frame six where he closes his eyes, and then he partially opens them again. I'm gonna make this easy on myself and make it only a couple of frames. I'm going to have a frame where he's completely open, hold that for a little bit, then have a frame where he starts to close his eyes, then closes his eyes, and then starts to open them back up again. First I want to do is get an outline of the face. So here I am at the first pumpkin. I'm going to use my black eyeliner. I'm going to get the pencil tool, make sure it's down to one pixel, and I'm going to outline the eye here. I'm going to put eyeliner so that he looks like an eye. Okay, now that I put some eyeliner on him, I could either just leave it as is, or I could fill it in. And I think for, just for safety's sake, I'm gonna fill this in with black. So again, I come over here. Uh, it's usually hidden by this gradient tool. I wanna go to my paint bucket tool and fill in these empty spaces. Now that I've got this pattern, I want to capture this pattern for later use. So if I was to select my color range, and I just wanna grab that smile and eyes and nose, I hit okay. I copy it, control C, and then I control V. And you'll notice here, I have a, a independent layer of just his face. I don't care about anything else. I just have his face because I'm going to start to animate this face. I'm going to go back to my pumpkin before and I'm going to create a canvas. I'll take my eyedropper, grab an orange here and then fill in his space here. Looks out of place here having an orange background, but I now have an orange 
canvas. If I put his face back on, it looks weird here, but it'll look better on X lines. I'm going to delete these frames. I want to have a frame where he's open for a couple seconds and then a couple that are closed. I'm going to duplicate his open layer. I'm going to call this layer no blink. And then I'm going to take this other one and make him blink a little bit. Blink one. I'll take his eye and erase. I want to move this to a size of one. Whenever you erase, it defaults to brush. You want the pencil tool so it doesn't make the surrounding pixels transparent, right? So now I have another layer where it's blink one. And if I wanted to get crazy, I could make a couple more. Let me speed this up and get those different layers. Now that I have three different positions of him blinking, I have him with no blink, I have him with starting to blink, he's closing his eyes more, and now he's completely closed. And what I want to do is I want to have a frame where he's closing it and then opening it back up again. I'm going to delete all these other frames too. We don't need, we want the pumpkin to look the same, just have different states of blinking. All right, if I move a empty pumpkin in front of each of these things, I can merge them all together. I'm going to merge this one. Let me turn, hide all these guys. Merge this one for a no blink. Merge. Merge this for a blink one. Merge this for a blink two. And lastly, merge these guys for a third blink. Okay, now that I've got them completely merged, I want to have them open it again. You can see as I go progress through these frames, he's slowly closing his eyes. Now I want him to open them up again. I want to duplicate this, but do it in reverse. So I'll duplicate this layer and move it up, duplicate the next layer, move that up, okay, and then I want to duplicate the no blink. So he starts off with his eyes open and then closes it and then opens them up again. Now I want to control the frequency with which he blinks. So I'm going to start off with underscore A underscore FRM zero comma, and I want him to hold it for about a second. One second is about a thousand milliseconds. I want to go to the next one where he starts to close his eye. I want it to be as fast as the blink was on the other one. So that was about 60 milliseconds. And we'll do that for the rest of these. We'll say this is frame one, copy. Frame two is 60 and so on. And this last one, I want him to hold it for two seconds. So he'll have, which is 2000. Okay, let's take a look and see what that will generate. If I was to export it as a GIF. Oh, he's, <laughs> I have these out of whack. Let me move them in the right order. It looks like he's kind of blinking out of order. There we go. Okay, let's try that. Now, let's take a look. Full eyes open and he blinks. Okay, we'll save it. Now that we've saved it, let's take a look at what it looks like on X-Lights. Moving back here. I've got my pumpkin here. I want to change it. So it looks a little better. So let's take our new jack-o'-lantern and we have it at a really impossible scale. I want to move it back to a hundred. And lo and behold, we have the eyes. We have transparent black. It's not a true black behind him. So you don't see the skeleton going through behind him. And he blinks his eyes every three seconds. We can add a little animation too, an in animation where he'll zoom in. Let's say zoom in about two while the skeleton goes behind him. Now that we have it working, this is what it looks like on the matrix. This has been a long video with a lot of information. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you enjoy this content, please let me know. If you have any additional tricks that I need to try, also let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy this content, hit the bell and subscribe. Thanks for watching.